So now it's my privilege to introduce a very special guest speaker we have for you today. His name is David George Brook, known as that gratitude guy. And he's been a speaker, coach, and best-selling author for over 25 years. He is a former Nordstrom store manager and has managed in the corporate world for over 30 years. He's published works called uh, the, Booker, the Booker's Daily Gratitude Journal, Happiness Starts with Gratitude, and a number of other books on gratitude. He recently completed a national tour with speaking engagements in Honolulu, San Antonio, Minneapolis, San Diego, and is currently conducting workshops for Special Olympics. Children's Hospital, Vestige International, DSHS, and our U.S. military, to name a few. As a result of his passion for gratitude, he's presented over 475 speeches and workshops in the past five years. With over 850 gratitude videos posted on YouTube, thousands have seen his message, and he's now considered a leading authority on how living a life of gratitude can enhance and improve your life. So please give him a warm welcome, David and George. Thank you, Susan. September 29th, 1998 was a Tuesday. I woke up about six in the morning. I looked over to the right side of my bed and I didn't find my wife. Just about then, my four-year-old son, Connor, comes in and says, where's mommy? I said, I don't know. Just then, my 14-year-old son walks in, where's mommy? We didn't know. So we walked down the stairway, went by a couple of rooms, we looked downstairs, and down by the washer and dryer, we saw Dana face down. It didn't look very good. We go running down there, I turn over, I start doing CPR, mouth to mouth, all this, and within a matter of about five or six minutes, there must have been 25 or 30 people in our house. Medics, fire, police, ambulance people working on her. Now even though this is coming up on 20 years ago, it feels like five minutes ago. And a little fire person came up to me and for those of you that have been through any kind of a trauma, and I'll guarantee you, a lot of people, maybe even the majority in this room have, time loses all measure. And the little fire person comes up to me and she says, Mr. Brooke, we've been working on your wife for 90 minutes. We still don't have a heartbeat. Would you like us to continue? And even though your body's in shock, Somehow the brain still seems to work a little bit. And I thought about it for a minute and I looked at the little fire person and I said, no, you can stop. And she was dead. And she was 38 years old. And as I mentioned, I had two sons that were four and 14 at the time. Now what made it so challenging for me to get on this journey with gratitude, and here we are today to express gratitude to all you wonderful folks, what made it so challenging for me is this wasn't the first loss I had suffered in my life. My father, very successful attorney, elected to end his own life with a gun. And my mother had died of cancer when I was young. A couple of my buddies in high school in car accidents, a few more in Vietnam. There were a lot of them that had passed on. And I remember thinking to myself, you are going to have to find out some way to cope with life. Because I'm not going down that route. And when I walked up to that deck that day, about two days later, later where we lived by Green Lake after Dana had passed away, I looked up to the sky and I made a little pact with myself. And I said, I now understand why people take their own life. Because I wasn't sure I was going to be able to bounce back from this. But I made a deal. I said, you are not going to ever do that, ever. You've got two boys to raise. And I continued to raise them, but I had to find something. What happened is I got gratitude introduced into my life. What gratitude does is help you focus on what you have versus what you don't have. We live in a world where people are constantly talking about what they don't have. 
somebody else has a bigger car, bigger donor, bigger house, better trip, this, this, that, whatever, and it's like a cat chasing its tail. It's impossible to get anywhere if you're constantly comparing yourself to somebody else. It's one of the least important things you can do. I'm going, to I'm going to touch on a little bit later about the most important relationship you have. Many will say with their maker, that's fine. But that relationship you have with the person in the mirror may be the most important relationship you have in your entire life. How do you get there? Gratitude can help you. Embracing gratitude, such a powerful mindset. Number two, it takes as long as it takes. You just can't ever give up. I am going to be 69 years old in about six months. It just seems like this life has just flown by. Again, I'll guarantee you there's a lot of people in the room that feel the same way. Where did it go? It goes by fast. But about five years ago, I made a pact with myself. You'd wanted to be a speaker since you were 19 and you've never done it. What is wrong with you? So I decided to become a speaker. And I remember very clearly because Connor, my younger son that was four when Dana passed away, was 17 at the time, when I walked in the house about two in the afternoon, and he goes, what are you doing home? And I went, I quit. And he goes, what do you mean you quit? I said, I quit. You quit working at Lowe's? And I went, yeah. You quit being a store manager? And I went, yeah. And he looks up from the couch, and he goes, well, that's just super dad. <laughs> I have a question for you now, dad. What are we going to do for food? I said, Connor, we bounce back from Dana's death, from everything else. I'll make it work somehow or otherwise. But you just can't give up. And I don't care how late. That's why I mentioned I was 62 when I started this journey. I'm 68 and a half now. Colonel Sanders was 63 when he started KFC, Mary Kay Ash, 58, J.C. Penney, 57, Ray Kroc, 55, McDonald's. It doesn't matter. Now, I am fortunate enough to go from junior highs all the way up to senior homes. I speak at a lot of senior homes. I speak really fast in the junior highs. I tend to speak a little slower. Some people would argue with that. In the senior centers. But it doesn't matter. It takes as long as it takes. Connor struggled mightily when Dana passed away. I went and he had to do all these special education things and, and IEPs, Individual in, uh, Education Development Plan, whatever it was. But he wanted to play baseball. But he couldn't play baseball. He just wasn't good at it at all. And he was struggling with school and I had to hold him back in first grade. He really struggled mightily after Dana's death. We would play coach pitch and then t-ball and Connor would like be by the ball and he'd be hitting up where my face is. And I said, no, you want to hit by the ball where the T is. And so finally he'd lower the bat lower and lower and lower and it finally hit the T. And the ball falls off and he goes, Dad, I got a hit. <laughs> and I didn't have the heart to tell him that's not how the game is played. Couldn't hit couldn't throw, couldn't catch, couldn't run. Other than that, he was pretty good. But he kept trying. He had his father and his older brother out there proving it doesn't matter what you go through. If you focus on what you're grateful for, if you focus on your blessings, if you focus on your abundance, you will have a more fulfilling life because you're focusing on what you have as opposed to what you don't have. So one day, I think it was May 31st, 1994, or 2004, excuse me, is about 11. He never played. I went to all the games, I went to all the practices and everything, but he just never played. I said, Connor, don't give up. Please do not give up in any circumstances. So we're in a game, it's the bottom of the seventh inning. All the other players have played except Connor. They're down seven to six. There's two guys on second and third, and there's two out, and I don't think there's anybody left in the dugout. So the coach goes, who else is left in the dugout? The guy goes, Brooke. So he goes, send them up. So Connor comes walking out from the dugout, swinging a bat like he's the biggest hitter of all time. I'm in the stands going, just a bunt, please. Connor gets up to the plate, strike one, ball one, strike two, ball two, goes to full count. 
Next pitch comes in, he just rips it down the third base line, goes inside the bag into left field. The guy from third comes in to score. The guy from second rounds third comes into home. The ball comes in from the field. The catcher catches it. They all crash together, and the ball pops out. And Connor's standing out on second base all by himself, and they've now won the game eight to seven, and he yells from second base, Dad, I got a hit! <laughs> Later that night, we got home and I sat him down on the bed. I said, Connor was never about baseball. Same thing with Kyle, my older son. We never gave up in the face of a lot of adversity. But I taught them about gratitude as well. You just cannot give up under any circumstances. And I said, you didn't. He went on to not only compete in the baseball world to be the leadoff hitter on his baseball team at Bothell High School, but also a 3-5 as a grade point. And next... Saturday, a week from Saturday, he graduates from San Diego State University with a 3.6 average and also one heck of an athlete. And thank you. Hold on, let me get him on FaceTime. That's for you, Connor. You've got to get rid of junk in your brain. You cannot let your body get filled with stuff. I go into these cul-de-sacs and these fancy places where people live and the garages, all three of them are full from bottom to top with boxes. Some of them have like a little 12 inch space where people just kind of go like this to get to their boxes. And I just don't understand, well gratitude's the same thing. If you hang around with a lot of negative people, if you hang around with a lot of people telling you what's wrong with this world, I was talking to Brian earlier, we were having a nice chat, and also Jay and Chris who were sitting next to me. There's a choice. Happiness is a choice. Gratitude is a choice. Up, down, left, right, black, red, Republican, Democratic. It's all a choice. But you get to make that choice. And I tell people, one of my books I did is called Happiness Starts with Gratitude. But I will tell you, if you hear nothing else that I say today, the most important message I can tell you is the power of a gratitude journal. Now this is a journal, a lot of the soldiers buy these and then the army buys them for them. And I do a lot of talks at Joint Base Lewis and McCord because 22 soldiers a day take their own life active and retired. Breaks my heart. All this does is five minutes a day to focus on what you have. It can make such a gigantic difference. And as far as this world we're in, you may notice I don't use a PowerPoint. I'm not a big fan of PowerPoint. I watch a lot of presentations to try to become a better speaker. And they've all got their little clicker. And then they just read what's on the screen. Uh, I think you need to be more grateful. Uh, number two, and I just don't understand it because I want to look at people's eyes and see if I'm connecting with people. But there's also something about writing. This requires people to write. There's also something that requires, that I should say there's a survey that was done rather, that talks about typing on a laptop, typing on a tablet, does make a better difference. But there's nothing quite like writing in the Gratitude Journal, as an example, I am so grateful to Susan McConnell for inviting me to speak to the wonderful Wesley Group today. It plants it in your brain. There's a little saying on the top of this Gratitude Journal. If you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. It makes such a difference. So I highly, highly, highly recommend a Gratitude Journal. I sell them, by the way, but I'll tell you, if you get a spiral notebook, that's fine with me. As long as you're doing something to put that down on paper and see the difference. Find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. As I said earlier, I contend the most important relationship you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. And again, if it's with God, that's fine too. 1A, 1B, however you want to do it, but that relationship is so important. I had the good fortune of just managing tens of thousands of people at Nordstrom stores and Lowe's and all these big places with all sorts of employees. And some of the crummiest employees were the ones that had the least opinion of themselves. And how you help somebody to get a better view of themselves, and if they're writing in a gratitude journal as an example, it makes such a big difference. If you find yourself and you have a great relationship with that person, and then you find out what you're passionate about, whether I'm speaking again to junior highs or senior homes or all the places in between the military people all say you're so passionate about what you talk about 
And I go, well, it can change your life. It can direct your, the course of your life. It can redirect it, rather. It can transform your life. It's an option to get things better in your head. Dana, 38 years old, as I mentioned, died of a prescription pill overdose. She took too many Vicodin, too many Oxycontin, and died. There was no need for her to pass away. And yet we have this opioid epidemic that you hear about all the time. It's horrendous. Well, a gratitude journal and writing in a gratitude journal and focusing on everything you have for five minutes a day can be the healthiest coping mechanism you can find. Because there's all sorts of destructive ones and there's a ton of deadly ones. And all I offer to people is this is one that can make a difference. But let's go back to that relationship you have with yourself. I have in my wallet a $20 bill. Andrew Jackson. Now if I hold up this $20 bill, just by a quick show of hands, how many people might want it? Thank you. I always wonder about the people that don't raise their hand. I always, it's kind of like, you know, it's some trick. Don't say this to me, Mr. Speaker. But I know you, most of you would be there. So if I do this, crush it up, how many would want it? Same thing. Think. I love the way you raise your hand. What is your first name? Susie. Susie. And then be behind you. What's your first name? Christine. Christine. God. I love it. Bam. It's just like, bam. It's just right there. <laughs> if I put it on the ground and step on it and crush it, and then I smooth it out, how many still want it? That's right. Look at all you guys. You guys are great. So if I look at Andrew Jackson and I go, Andrew Jackson, you're worthless. You don't even deserve to be on this planet. I don't even know why you're here breathing air that everybody else should have. You know what Andrew Jackson says? He looks back at me and he goes, well, you know what, Mr. Speaker Man? You can say whatever you want about me, but I'm still worth 20 bucks. <laughs> and he would be right. So I ask people in big groups of five or 10,000 people down to workshops of 10 or 15, why is it you will occasionally let somebody crush you, step on you, tell you you don't deserve to be here and allow that to get into your brain and worst of all, maybe devalue you from 20 to 15 to 10 to five to the worst case of all, zero. Don't allow it to happen. Figure out, and one of the best ways you can do that is when you get a gratitude journal, and you're focusing on everything you have. You can have the best armor, the best Teflon, the best defense against the gamma rays of negativity that come into us. So please focus on that relationship with yourself. Last thing I'm gonna talk about today is sharing gratitude. Embrace gratitude, it takes as long as it takes, don't ever give up, make room for gratitude, clear out your brain, get a gratitude journal. And the final thing is sharing gratitude. There's something about sharing. Again, I was having a nice conversation with Brian. Why is he with Wesley? Why I'm on the board at Wesley? Why I'm on the board at Wesley? Why are all you people here? Because we want to share. We want to help. We want to give back. There's something I said to Brian that's so true. I was talking to Walter Lang also earlier. You meet somebody, you shake their hand, you instantly like them, or you don't. So the whole idea about giving, you sort of either get it or you don't. And I don't know if people can make that transition, but I'll tell you, the people that want to share in life, it's phenomenal. I once went, wanted to go skydiving. So I, I rustled up about 10 of my friends. We're all going to go skydiving together. I make the appointment. I'm kind of the ringleader. So I sign up over by Eastgate when it was still an airport over there. So on Monday of the week, we we're going Saturday. And Monday of that week, a couple of them call me. They can't make it. And then by Wednesday or Thursday, I had a couple other calls. <laughs> Let me guess, you have a sore throat. Yeah, I can't make it. Chicken. So Saturday, about 10 o'clock, I walk up to the skydiving place. And he goes, can I help you? I go, Brooke, party of 10. And he looks over my shoulder on each side. He sees no one. And he goes, where are all your friends? And I went, I don't have any. <laughs> Nobody showed up. I was all by myself. So of course now I have to go. It was a static line thing. 
and I jump and they take my picture. I'm all scared, you know, I'm like all freaking out and my hands are out like this. And I, and I got back and he goes, well, nice job. And he hands me the little picture and I go, thanks. And I just walk to my car by myself, like all proud of myself. Nobody to talk to, nobody to share with. And I got the picture still, but why do we share? It makes life more fulfilling. That's what gratitude can do for you. Last thing I'm gonna tell you about, I normally make everybody tell, pull out their cell phones and I won't do it today. But I love this exercise I do at the end, it's called the four T's. So I would like you to consider doing this later today with your phone, either telling, texting, tweeting, or telephoning somebody to tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. I'll guarantee you one person is going to get a text from me later today. Her name is Susan McConnell for inviting me. So people start texting, so I do it, and I did it with the service, and they're all, they got their phones out, they're just texting like crazy. And, and it's just like, all, you're watching them, and in, in the high schools, in 60 seconds I give them the text, they've done about 10 texts. They're just going like crazy, <laughs> like this, like, wow, I've never seen fingers move that fast. But I would encourage you to do this later today. I won't make you do it right now, because my time is short. But I will tell you what happened to me a couple of times. I was doing something, uh, doing a talk at the Bothell Chamber of Commerce, and it's the Bothell uh, Fine Arts deal, and there was a guy, there's a lady sitting right about where, actually where Susie Burke is. Wasn't very far away. So she was using it as a telephone, and I could hear her talking. And everybody else was texting, but she was using the phone. And she goes, yes, honey, I'm just so grateful for you, and I'm so thankful, I'm so appreciative, I'm assuming it was her husband. And I just want to tell you that I just love you and I just, I don't know, some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, no, that's not, that's not the idea. So then later I sell books and I sell the journals and so people come up to the table and they tell me all these things, it's really gratifying. And so people come up and they show me the phone, they show me the text, and the text says, I'm grateful for you too, what do you want? <laughs> and then there was one more recently, uh, are you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> so I will tell you, I mentioned, if you take away one thing from this 15 or 20 minute talk, consider a gratitude journal. You can buy mine online on Amazon. I sell a lot of them and that's fine, but I don't care how you get it. But if you give it a shot and write down for one day, for one week, try it for a week, see what happens. I don't care how old you are. We have many ages here from young to old. Embracing gratitude is one of the greatest mindsets that you can embrace or, with or hold as a way to live your life. We've all come around. A lot of people are very grateful. I guarantee you there's the vast majority, if not everybody here today is. When you come across ungrateful people, I just want to, I don't know what's wrong with you. Again, Brian and I were talking about that too. There's just some people who just don't get it. But I will ask you to consider a gratitude journal and I will ask you to use it as another way to cope in this crazy thing that we call life out here as a very, very healthy coping mechanism that can change your life, it can save your life, it can transform your life if you just give it a chance. Give it a try, you'll see if it'll work for you too. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, David.